Facebook. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Um, we are on day four of our lives. I'm just going to get set up on um, Instagram over here and then we'll get started. Uh, let's see. Start. Okay. Uh oh. Let's see if I can put that there. Uh oh. <laughs> Turn around. There we go. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right, I'm gonna give it a minute um, to let people have an opportunity to hop on. We are on, what day is this? Four, so day four of our uh, 30 days of content challenge. And if you're on Facebook, you can see all my books. Let me turn this, look y'all. Okay, so right here, I told y'all we are going to be looking at my bookshelf. So to make this easier, I kind of moved my books off my bookshelf. Um, and plus it's kind of a mess where my bookshelf is. So <laughs> we're going to do it over here. Um, so welcome everyone. Happy Saturday. I see Kim, uh, Cherie, who else we got? Brooklyn. Hey y'all. Um, oh, let's go Brooklyn. I, so I forgot to y'all will hear my smoke detector beeping so y'all this thing has been beeping forever and it won't stop so i have to like push the button to get it to stop i usually do that before i go live but it's saturday and i haven't been up here so um bear with the the beeping uh hopefully it doesn't bother you too much um definitely used to it <laughs> But let's go ahead and dive in. So I see y'all. Hey, Kim. Um, hey, uh, Nectar Lane. You got to tell me your name, girl. I don't know your name. We've been talking. I see you posting. Inspired to get you some book recommendations as well. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and pull some books. Okay. So I'm going to start. I got three piles, you guys. Actually, maybe I'll move it like this. Maybe that'll be good. Okay. 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 I see. I see. Good thing I got some pants on because I ain't I ain't playing for my my bottom to be on camera today. All right, so I'ma hop on your hop in my inbox. Okay, go ahead and hop in my inbox, girl. Um, so you know what I think I'm gonna start today with my little my smallest. So this is business. <laughs> this is business stuff right here. This one, well, this goes over here. This pile, you guys, is all design actually i'll bring this a little closer this pile is all like specifically design stuff and then i got this little pile well i guess this one could kind of go in business but this is more of my personal um this is more of my personal collection and i'll tell you like i'll tell you what i really enjoyed about each of these although i'm not done with this one but i'm actually gonna start here because you guys know you guys know that, well, if you listen to me, I have told you that business success is dependent upon really your commitment to personal growth and development. Why won't this turn? Okay. So that's why I'm actually, I'm going to start with my, dang it, this little camera is not working for me today. Hold on. Let me go up, over. Okay. So I'm actually going to start with the personal books um and okay y'all probably have seen this one this was actually gifted to me so we should all be millionaires by rachel rogers this is a, a great great book but let me tell you why i put it in my personal side it is because she is a mixed woman and the things that she was talking about i was looking more so at a personal kind of approach um rather than a business and uh <laughs> Although there's business stuff in here, kind of what I took from it was her perspective being a biracial woman. So that's why I put this one in in kind of the personal thing. But also because Rachel understands that your your personal life is directly re related to the success of your business. So if you're like having a hard time with um balance and feeling guilty about taking time for yourself this is a good book so if you have a business and you are looking for a holistic like personal and business kind of growth in one 
this is a good one right here okay this is a good one um I'm ready for all of you guys. I know. I try to find better, better filler words, but I guess that you guys is better than um. I don't say um a whole lot. <laughs> but I do say you guys a lot. Uh okay. Another, I'm not finished with this one. I'm about a third of the way through, but you guys, Brooklyn, <laughs> if you all are looking to do some inner work and to really like get clear on your ish so that you can grow as an individual and be a better person in your in your life and in your business this one right here so this one is how to do the work recognize your patterns so this is huge a lot of times we're getting certain results in our lives right how many of you are kind of on this I guess I'll call it a hamster wheel where you're doing certain things and you're getting the same result over and over again, whether it's the desired result or the result that like undesired result. Um, regardless what the result is, it is because of what you're doing. So the patterns, the actions, your day to day, your thought process, how are you talking to yourself? All of these things our patterns and when we can identify the patterns in our lives that are getting us certain results we can then start to um, change we can change those patterns we can change our actions and therefore we get different results but this book is so good in helping you identify your crap a lot of us don't know that we have crap or we know we have crap, but we just don't know what it is. This definitely helps. Um, so she says, uh, recognize your patterns, heal from your past, and create yourself. So um, she is on Instagram. Um, what is it? The Holistic Psychi Psychiatrist, I think. Great channel just to follow. A lot of her uh, account, um, a lot of her content are quotes straight from the book. Same thing, you guys, with Rachel. If you've read Rachel's book and you follow her on Instagram, she is pulling quotes out of here all the time for her content. So I want you guys to think about that as well. What have you written? What have you said? So like these videos that I'm doing, I'm going to transcribe them and then turn them into other content. We can take a note from all of these authors who are doing the same thing. We have so much content available in that I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos that I have done because I, I do live video teaching, you know, my students and, and meetings and all of that. And all of it is content. Yet we struggle to come up with content, but it's already there in front of us. So let's simplify what we're doing. Prime example, I'm creating content today and all I'm doing is talking about books that I love. We're, we're making things more complicated. So hopefully that was a little nugget you could pick up on there. Like, what are we... Again, patterns. Is that why we don't like social media? Why we don't, you know, what, like why we're not consistent with posting and creating content for our business because we feel like we have to, it's always it creation mode. You don't always have to be creating new stuff. You can repurpose your old stuff. And that's exactly what these authors are doing. They are taking clips from their books. So where are your clips at? Do you know where your clips are? Find your clips. And then we're going to repurpose them, okay? Um, so, let's see. Oh, yes, the holistic psychiatrist. So, this is a amazing, and I'm only, this is where I'm at right here. So, I'm only like a third way through. But it's so, so good. And, in fact, um, one of the things that I have implemented to, okay, so her whole premise is reparenting yourself. So, you're learning, like, Kind of the things that have happened in your ha in your past that are creating habits in your current that are really dictating your future. Okay, so one of the things in reparenting is like um, creating some structure. So and like you have to you have to kind of dig into like what your your issues are to know how to reparent yourself. But one of the things for me is. I didn't ever really have like real structure growing up. For example, making my bed. I never had to do that. And I would always like, my husband on the other hand, 
He always wants to make his bed. I'm like, what the hell? You're just going to get back in and mess it up anyways. So I challenged, like, that was one of my challenges for myself. A lot of times we set ourselves up for success trying to do everything at once. But the approach here is pick one thing and stick to it for it's for me I think I've been for two months now I have made up my bed every single day and it just isn't it's very insignificant but it does something for me it's like a concrete start to my day and if I don't accomplish anything else in the day I did the one thing that you know just shows that I have structure in my life I made my bed and I actually sleep better at night when my bed is made during the day so again this book is going to help you to identify kind of what crap you got going on and then it's going to help you find ways to, to to heal and do better um and to grow so great book right here um the last one this was actually in the little pi picture that i posted for today's reminder might seem like a a weird <laughs> a weird pick but my husband aaron actually bought me this book and one of the reasons he did Mariah Carey is also mixed. Um, I am mixed. And that is, it's so interesting. My mom is actually here. This is the first time she has been able to visit us in Tennessee since we've been here for almost four years now. Um, I hadn't seen my mom in almost two years and she's here and we're in the middle of healing some things. And part of that has to do with me being mixed. I didn't grow up mixed. I grew up white. And so I'm having to like reparent myself and relearn some things so that I can tap into my true self. And so Mariah Carey's story is actually really inspiring and empowering. And I respect her so much more after, you know, just reading her story and hearing how she found, like how she found her voice and knowing, you know, that the things that I went through, it wasn't like, I wasn't the only person that had to go through those things and just having that knowing oh Sheree you're in the same boat like it's a whole it's weird you guys if you kind of fall in the middle it's like okay no one really understands what you have to go through it's kind of a you have to walk through it to understand it and I just loved how um Mariah just shared her story and how um it just it was just inspiring to see how she overcame her things and then just to be able to look at my own story and be like okay i can see how these things that that you know i experienced in my life are relevant and important and that's actually something i had to tell my mom because she's like she didn't know she's dealing with her own stuff she had me when she was 16. like of course you're gonna <laughs> not make the best decisions at 16. but you know i had to tell her like i'm upset with how things went down right but at the end of the day I'm, I'm 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 okay like everything that i've gone through has got me here and has created me into the person that i am so it's not like i don't know it's a weird kind of thing like this might have to be a whole other call uh, or a whole other um live session where i just kind of talk about that but this is a really good book if you are trying to find your voice if you're feeling like hmm kind of i don't want to say lost but just you're looking for yourself this is a good book good book okay also this would be a good one too if you're looking for yourself if you know you're like if you if you know you're kind of headed down you can't seem to get off of the hamster wheel. This is a good book, okay? All right, so those are my personal picks. Brooklyn says, we are, are, were you having an identity crisis and do you feel that has created challenges with helping your clients find their vision? So that's actually a great question. And it's a whole lesson. <laughs> it's actually a whole lesson in my programs where I teach people how to look at their past experiences and how to take them and package them up as expertise. So that's exactly, and I told my mom this as well, I'm like, the way that I grew up, I had to camouflage. I had to become whoever I was in front of. Who did you need me to be? Like, what did you need 
I, it, I didn't exist. I was whoever the person in front of me needed to be. So I got really good at understanding what people want. And that, you can't learn that in school. That is completely my life experience. And 100% without a doubt, that experience is why I was amazing at helping people brand themselves. Think about it. Okay, my whole life, I'm figuring out who do I need to be for you to like me. That's the same thing we're doing with branding. Okay, who are you trying to get in front of? Oh, okay, let's see. Okay, what do we need to do to make them like you? Y'all, I'm the queen of that because I can be whoever you need me to be. Now, I will, let me say I could. I don't do that anymore. I don't do that anymore because I have found my voice, but I know that is what has got me here. That is what enabled me to get the level of results I get my clients. Okay, and then it's literally just this experience that I'm taking full circle. Absolutely. And that's what I want you all to think about as well. It's like, you know, things happen in our lives. We go through certain experiences. The question is, did you did you learn a lesson? What lesson can you take from it? And how can we utilize that to, to get closer to where we're trying to go? All right, so um, let's see, uh, learn the same thing growing up, same here. Yeah, so taking those past experiences and not letting them, really, because some, ne like, there was negative stuff that had, like, that. I shouldn't have to conform for anyone for, for them to like me, but that was my belief system, and I got really good at it, and, you know, that's a skill that I acquired that has nothing to do with branding, nothing to do with graphic design, but I leverage that skill to help other people do the thing that I was just naturally good at. Just naturally good at because of the way that I was raised. Um, so yeah, it is like code switching maybe I mean I don't know that it's really that much deeper unless you just like you don't understand. Okay. Before I understood what I was doing, then I guess that's code switching. But with that knowing of okay. I know exactly what's going on and I am switching. That took a lot for me to like really understand and comprehend kind of what I was doing. So it might be a little bit of a, a deeper a layer there. So yeah, you're right, Ashley, for sure. Um, okay, so I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to go to design. Should I do design books next or business books? Which one y'all want to see? Just so I got a lot more business books than design. Let's see. So these are our our business marketing and then design so which one do y'all want to relatable which one y'all want to see business okay cool okay cool all right so let me i'm just gonna move this over <laughs> yes okay so i I don't think maybe what I'll do here is like go through the spine because there's so many. Okay, so Essentialism. This is the book I gave away last week. This is all about priorities and creating the life that you want without having to do all the things, right? Like without having to work your, you know, work yourself to death because then you don't get to enjoy the life. So that's what this one is about. And we talked about it all week. Super amazing book. Okay, high performing habits. I will be 100% honest and say I didn't finish this one because this, this is a big ass book, y'all. And I did, um, I have the audio book, but I haven't read it all. However, for this book, so the way that he, he created these habits is he, um, it's kind of like, you know how people do surveys and they like, I surveyed a hundred people and these were our results. So this is what he did. So he cert, not kind of surveyed, um, it was like thousands of people and they were all high performing and the highest performing individuals, these are their, these are their top habits that they have. Um, honestly, I don't even know how many are in here cause I didn't finish it. I think it's seven section two social habits um but i will say this one it just 
it, it was too much for me. Um, I took more from it the, the small little things that you don't really think about. So this one was more about I'm just going to pick out some little nuggets versus I'm going to read the whole book. So I couldn't get through the audiobook either. But I don't really love audiobooks like that. So I'll probably try this one again just because when I picked it up the first time, I couldn't like I couldn't really get into it. But I want to make a note. This happens to me a lot, and it's usually because I'm not ready for the book. All right. There's one in here. This one right here. Let me pull it out. Hold on. Oh. Oh. Okay. So this book right here unstoppable influence um it says be you be fearless transform lives it was just a random buy but when i first started reading it it was too religious for me like i'm more of a spiritual person versus like hardcore religion and this was too like too religious for me so i was like eh, i ain't ready i didn't get rid of it i thought about it but i was like no i'm gonna keep it and i read it last year and <sighs> I had to I had to look at it through a different lens in order to be able to get through it because you know we have our little blocks and things but once I could really I had to replace like her religious stuff with my spiritual stuff and then I could get through it and it made sense but the point is I couldn't I could not read this book the first time I opened it because I wasn't ready for it. And I do that a lot with like ideas. I have a ton of ideas and they don't happen. But then like a year or two will pass and the idea that I wrote down has completely happened. So I want y'all to just be mindful of that. Sometimes we're not ready to receive the information. So if you pick up a book and you're like, I just cannot get into this. Just set it aside for a little while and, you know, come back to it later. Um, you might need to learn a lesson before you're ready for the lessons in this. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but this one, Unstoppable Influence, what was my biggest takeaway from here? Um, let me see. Okay, let's review. Let me see it because I highlight. That's another little tip. I highlight and write in my books, which is why I don't I don't like digital books because I can't highlight them. And I don't like e-readers because I can't highlight it. I want to be able to tag my books. I don't know what I think my biggest takeaway from this book was that it's OK to come back to something if it wasn't right the first time. That's really my takeaway from this book. Um, but it was it was inspiring. Um, I don't think I did the workbook, but I wouldn't say this is one of my top books. It's just in my bookshelf, but it did teach me a lesson, a lesson that sometimes you're not always ready to receive what's in front of you. You got to do a little bit more work to be ready to receive. OK, that's why I like when you watch movies. If you've seen it a million times and then you notice a part that you never noticed before, it is because you have new awareness. You have a new level of consciousness. You're you're actually like you're on a whole other level so you can experience it differently. Um, this one, I'll come back and give an update. I hadn't got through this one yet because it was, I don't think it's, this is one of my friend's book, Ramaya Trask. I'm actually quoted in this book. Um, this was a great read just because, so you can build freaking amazing websites. Um, really great approach to simplifying the website building process. So if you're a website designer, I mean, you're, you know, just trying to figure out how to streamline some things. Even if you're not, this is actually, I think you wrote it for non-designers, but this is a great book. It's, you can read it in a day. Super great. Um, just casual read to, to get you some good gems and nuggets for your, your design business. Um, but he quotes a lot of good um, business owners in there as it relates to their approach to business and like their online presence and all of that. So really good read uh, for you designers there. Oh, this is... This is a good book, you guys. And this is a quick read, too. Um, dollars flow easily to me. This probably shouldn't be in the business. This is actually a mindset book. Um, uh, dollars flow easily to me by Richard Dots. So really what this book taught me 
is money mindset stuff. It taught me that the way I was thinking about money was actually preventing money from coming to me because money flows. So if you feel like, you know, if, if you always get money and then you're always broke, this is a book for you. Okay. I read this in one day. Um, it will change your whole perspective. It, it shows you to have an abundant relationship with money. And when you can tap into that knowing that money is literally just energy and it does flow and you tap into your own abundance, that is when money flows to you. So this is not a money, a book on how to make money. No, it's a book on how to get your relationship with money better so you can actually make more money. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's really, it's really about changing the identity of who you are. And that's what it takes for change. Okay. For example, if you identify as um, you're not a morning person, right, then you are going to not be a morning person. But if you think, hey, I'm a, a hey, Lorema, if you think, um, okay, and you tell yourself, I am, I am a morning person. First thing when you get up, then your body's going to be like, and your brain is going to be like, oh, okay, we're a morning person. Even though you feel, and I, I have to do this every morning, you guys. What are your first thoughts when you wake up? Because whatever those first thoughts are, they're going to dictate your day. Um, and it's the same thing. Your thoughts with money, your thoughts with relationships, your thoughts around anything are going to dictate what you have in that realm. So great book if you have some issues with money mindset. Uh, I can't charge a lot. Yeah, okay, so Brooklyn says, I hate my job. I wanna go back to sleep. Okay, so when you wake up, uh, all right, okay, I hate my job. We don't hate our job. What do you love about your job? I love that I have secure, I have, I have the security of a paying job. Or is there any people that you enjoy? Maybe it's your ride to work that you like. Find the joy in the things that you hate and things will start to turn around okay um <laughs> i have to every morning when i wake up i have to automatically make myself think positively i have to make myself have a positive thought because sometimes like i i didn't realize this about myself but i actually i'm not gonna say i am i was a negative person and so the first thing in the morning when I wake up, I have to make sure that my thoughts are positive. Okay, because that's going to literally dictate my entire day. It's your relationship with yourself, your relationship with your thoughts, all of that. This is a good book, even though it's about money, it will still help you with relationship um, just kind of that that mindset around it okay oh this is a good one okay the one page marketing plan get new customers make more money and stand out from the crowd this was a good one i loved um the little uh let me see he illustrates it really well like i love and you can see i have some stuff highlighted in here I love all the charts, just I'm a very like nerdy kind of person. And, and he didn't just tell me to do stuff. He was like, I want you to do this and this is why. So it explains it really, really well. Um, and uh, it was simple because it's just one page. Like the whole marketing approach is just one page. I think I started this one as an audiobook, and then I decided to buy it. Um, I want to say I also read this in like a day as well. While no one can guarantee your success, having a plan dramatically increases your probability of success. So I just like to take like little nuggets out of that. Um, he talks about uh, Pareto's law, the 80, 20, you know, 20% um, of what you do yields 80% of the results. So a lot of times like we're trying to do 80% of the things and it only yields a 20% result. So it's teaching you to focus on the right things which again kind of goes back to this one, uh, essentialism, focusing on the right things. So if you were kind of interested in this book, but you like you like the idea of focus, but you need help with marketing, then this would be a good book. This would be a good book for you. 
Um, what we have now? Okay, crushing it, you guys. So this was uh, Gary V. This is an older book. This was one of my first business books. Um, <laughs> Gary V. is kind of an extremist. So if you get this book, I would definitely say like take what he says with a grain of salt because he's like go 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 hard 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 and that's why i got this book when i first started kind of the this space of what i do like the real marketing um because that was my mindset i gotta go 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 so he was right up my alley but as i started doing mindset stuff i i don't really follow gary v like that anymore because what he talks about isn't aligned with how I run my business. But if you're just starting and you have like that real hustle in you, this is a, it is a good book. It's a good book. It'll get you motivated and it'll get you like, let's, let me go do something. So if you need some motivation, this is a good book. But if you're trying to simplify your life and take back your time and create balance, this is not the book for you. <laughs> Gary Vee is not going to give you no, no balance. I think he even said, he's like, if you got to hustle and work 16 hours a day, do that shit. And I was like, yeah. And now I'm like, oh, hell no. <laughs> so good book, depending on kind of what you're trying to create in your life. And that's why it's important too to know, like, what are you trying to create in your life? Um, What... Uh, I think I stopped recording on Facebook. No, I didn't. Okay, sorry. I got all distracted. Um, but yeah, so getting clear, like what are you trying to do and create by way of your business? What kind of lifestyle are you trying to create? So for me, as a, a wife and a mama three, working 16 hours a day, like Gary Vee says, it does not align with the lifestyle I'm trying to create. So this would not be a good book for someone who is trying to have that, you know, free time, uh, balance. This is all about go, go, go. It is a good book, though. Okay. Oh, story brand, you guys. This is so good. This is good for brand designers or non-designers. Anyone who has a business, it really helps you understand what the hell you're selling. So many people think they're selling the thing that they're selling, but it has nothing to do with the thing. It's about the result that you get. And this book can help you understand how to talk about it in a way so that you're not selling what everyone else is selling, which is things, stuff, crap. You're going to sell a result. You're going to sell an outcome. And it allows you to infuse the result that you're getting into your messaging, your copy, your story. Okay. This is great. And I want to say one of my students, he has a, so Donald Miller, I know he does like events and stuff. One of my students, I think she might have took a master class or something. And she was like, so good. So if you're interested in like wanting to understand how to create a story for your brand that actually sells easily, that you don't have to work hard to sell, this is a great book. What do I have? Oh, I have, uh, so this sticky note right here. This sticky note. If you guys are, so social proof is a big thing, like testimonials. And a lot of testimonials that I see are, oh, Amber's great or you know like it's it's not trans it's not transformative it's really about the person and those types of result or uh, testimonies they don't lead to anything so one of my most favorite resources in this book are uh, the five he has five questions to ask to get amazing testimonials should I share the questions with you guys do y'all want to know what those questions are what questions should you ask your clients after they finished working with you? What questions to ask in order to get testimonials that lead to inquiries, that lead to new leads? Okay, for the right reason. All right, so get your, get your pens out. Question number one. So these are transformation-based questions so that the testimonies you receive from your clients are rooted in the transformation and the result that you helped them get okay so let's think about this transformation or uh, testimonial number one amber was great i got a beautiful logo i'm so excited about my business 
Sounds cute and nice, but it ain't helping me get more clients. So let's look at these questions and we can talk about how that, uh, how that testimonial should have looked. So question number one, what was the problem you were having before discovering our product? So me, I'm going to ask so my client, so what problem were you struggling with before uh, working with me on your strategy and your design? So then they're going to tell me before working with, um, before discovering Amber's, uh, you know, services, I was, you know, trying to DIY my website. I was searching, uh, spending hours and hours trying to figure out how to create. So they're going to explain the problem here. And we have to know the problem in order to create a solution. So this is actually going to help you be even better in your business because they're going to give you insight on what their real problems were. So number one, thank you, uh, Brooklyn. You're so good. Um, uh, what was the problem you were having before you discovered our product or service? Number two, what did the frustration feel like as you tried to solve the problem? This is going to tap into the emotion of the problem. So yes, there's a problem. I don't have a website. I can't get clients. What does it feel like? It feels like I'm never going to be able to leave the job that's sucking the life out of me. That's a huge frustration. And guess what? Other people will relate to that. They're not going to relate to, April was so nice and my logo is so pretty. They don't care about that. They care about how is it going to help them. So these questions allow you to showcase the transformation so they understand how you can help them. Okay. Question number three, what was different about our product, our service, our program? So this is going to give you insight on what other people are doing and how it didn't work. So it positions you as the, the, the person, the thing, the product, the service that's actually going to get them the result they wanted when they tried it with this other person. So this is giving you stories on the journey, the experience, the past experiences, because those past experiences are going to dictate their future buying decisions. OK, so when we can have a knowing. So, for example, if someone comes to me and say, yeah, I, try, you know, I worked with another designer prior to coming to Amber. And, you know, the communication was I just I didn't feel like they understood what I what I was looking for in my brand. They didn't understand who I was trying to get in front of or what I was about. So then I you know, when they come to me, I'm like, oh, See, I know that's a problem. So when you do work with me, we're going to have strategy. We're going to actually talk to each other. You're not only going to fill out questionnaires. I'm going to get to know you. And then that way, I know you and your business and who you're trying to you know, get in front of. That way, what we do together actually works, unlike you know, those past experiences. So we're getting really good insight here to help us do better every single time. Like every time you work with a client, you should be getting better because you should be learning from your previous experiences. And this can help you get better and it can also help you get clients. So number four, this is a big one. Take us to the moment when you realized our product or service was actually working to solve your problem. This is that aha moment, that light bulb, that moment of clarity that you, they're like, wow, this is actually working. That's also a level of proof for when you put this testimonial out there, your people who are reading it are going to relate with question number one, the problem. They're going to relate with number two, the frustration. They're going to be intrigued by number four, number three, what was different. And then number four is that very moment. They're going to let your potential clients in on what that feeling of, oh my gosh, this is actually going to work. I can actually reach my goals. I can leave my job. I can spend time with my children. I can... Do you see the emotion and the feeling and the people reading it want the same thing? It is proof that you got the juice to get them the result that they're after. OK, so question number four is so, so good. Thank you, Brooklyn. Now, number five, we're rounding it out. The ultimate transformation. They had the result. Their life has changed in some way, shape or form. So now we want to know number five. Tell us what life looks like now that your problem is solved or being solved. 
solved. So we're shedding light on what after looks like. So after you solve this problem, here's what your life could look like. So since working with Amber, you know, I am super clear on who it is that I'm serving and how to get in front of them. And the message that I put out is exactly for them. So I'm only attracting the right people and they're happy to pay me my prices that I just tripled. And because I tripled my prices, I don't have to work with as many people. And now I'm making more money working less and I get to spend time with my kids and my family and travel and I'm not stuck to the computer dealing with you know problem clients because all my clients see my value. That's the transformation. That's what people actually want. But you got to be able to tap into what result they want so you can highlight it. So you can give them a glimpse into what life can look like after you solve the problem. These types of testimonials, and if you look at any of mine, I ask these same questions. So you can see, um, and if you go... If you go to my website on the group coaching page, there are four videos. They all ask the same question. And then also there's a post, the student spotlight. If you look through those questions or the answers, they're all from these questions. So you guys, the reason that you are even connected with me and like what I say is because I understand what you want. I understand what you want, okay? This is a great book to help you understand what your people want as well. And then also to capture testimonials in a way that it showcases the transformation to others. All right. Okay. I'm going to go through the rest of these a little bit faster because I'm definitely over on my time here. Road Less Stupid. This is to help you think better, to help you ask yourself better questions because the answers that you get are directly dependent upon the quality of questions you ask. So, um, this book has been on my wish list for a bit, so obviously you get it. Yep, I haven't finished this one, but it's not like a sit and read book. You're not going to sit down and read this book in one setting because it's it's giving you assignments. It has something called thinking time and it you read a chapter and they're really funny. They're really short too. Um, so let's see. Uh, Y'all, mm, Kool-Aid. Like, I don't even remember what that was about, but it's only two pages long and I think I highlight it quite a bit here. Yeah, so this is a two page chapter and I have, what does it say? Let's see. Gold medals are never won by the competitor who did the least or read a book on how to run a marathon and not a marathon and not to get tired, much less works for only a, only hours a day. What it's saying is you can't read a book to learn how to ride a bike. <laughs> you got to go out there and do shit. You got to go out there and make decisions. You got to go out there and have asked yourself the hard questions in here so you know how to answer um, or to even approach obstacles and approach problems in your business. This is going to help you solve problems. And it's entitled The Road Less Stupid because it is prompting you to ask yourself hard questions so that you don't go down the stupid road. And it has something called stupid tax. So when you don't ask yourself the right questions or when we kind of take the wrong approach because we're not doing like we, we know better, but we don't do better, you're going to pay stupid tax. So this is a good book. It's kind of comical in the sense of like his approach, but it is really good in helping you like ask yourself hard questions. And he tells you to like start your day, start and end your day with certain questions so that you're really able to take a stock every single day and what you're doing. And a lot of times we run into problems because we're not really analyzing what we're doing. We're just kind of doing this is going to make you analyze what you're doing. Oh, free to focus. This is, I would kind of say this is similar to essentialism, but not really. This one is going to give you more strategy. So if you're looking for strategy on how to get stuff off of your plate, like you want to delegate stuff, you want to, um, you want to really focus on only the things that matter. So really, 
if you were going to get both of these books, I would do Essentialism first and then this one. This is going to give you the foundation of doing less, and this is going to give you the strategy to do less. Okay. Um, I haven't read this one yet, The Irresistible Offer. Uh, I picked this up on a recommendation, but I haven't read it yet. Um, start with why. This is great if you don't know, if you feel like you have no direction and you're not really sure what you're trying to create in your business, this is a good one. Y'all said y'all love Atomic Habits. I will be honest, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I tried it, I couldn't get through it. Um, I think because I had heard so much about it, I just couldn't get into it. So I tried the audio book too. And a lot of what he talks about in here I have already kind of learned the lessons and that might be why I couldn't get into it, which means I wasn't ready to receive what I needed to. Because if you go into a book or anything thinking I already know this, you're not going to learn anything and you're not going to take anything away. So yeah, Rissa, I don't know what it was. I will say the audiobook. I, I remember listening to the audio book on a plane and it wasn't bad. The one, I, the one suggestion that comes to mind was like you're trying to create habits, but you're not setting yourself up for success for these habits. So, for example, um, you know, top of the year, I'm going to I'm going to start working out. I'm going to lose weight, all of that. But you don't do the thing. So one of his suggestions is just putting on the workout clothes. All right. And then once you get the clothes on, it's like you feel stupid sitting in workout clothes and you're not working out. So things it's like actions so he's helping you create actions that turn into habits that lead to the result that's what this is and i kind of like i understand that concept which is why maybe i couldn't get into it but also i just might not be ready <laughs> so um next call i'll give my face cliff note uh oh your fave yeah give us your cliff notes absolutely this one is a favorite you guys i love this book it is Launch by Jeff Walker. This is going to teach you what people want to hear when you're launching something. It gives you some, this is a good strategy book right here. It's going to give you some real tips and um, it's not even tips, it's a plan. He lays out a whole launch plan in here and I have done it and it does work. And actually I learned about this book from one of my coaches multiple i think he might even be an eight figure eight figure earner at this point but he implemented this exact strategy and i learned it from him and then i got the book and then i kind of did my own like iterations i know i have on workout these are workout pants now like that's all i don't even wear jeans no more i wear biker shorts every day <laughs> and i have a little heater under me so i don't get cold um influence I have not finished this one. The front of it, the beginning was a little slow. The storytelling was a little slow, so I didn't get too far. But this was a, this was a recommendation from one of my eight-figure coaches, as was this one, Blue Ocean Strategy. I have read some of all of, or some of both of these, and I got nuggets from them. I just haven't sat down and like really dove in yeah like i have a bookmark here at page eight but the i think i stopped reading because i got such a great lesson out of these eight pages okay so the lesson i learned out of these eight pages was let's see so he told a story about it was it was like in a a, a really uh, it was a town. It was a little small little shop in this tourist type town, and the owner of the business um, had like this new. I want to say it was like a, a necklace or I don't know. It was a stone, something that the owner was trying to sell to all these tourists, and it wasn't selling. So the owner told the associate, hey, I want you to discount these by 50% so that we can just sell them. Well, the associate messed up and increased them by 50%. And the crazy thing is that they sold out when they increased the price. And the reason was because of the perceived value of the thing. Same exact thing two same exact things one half price and one twice as much 
and they sell out at the twice as much when they don't sell at regular price because the people perceived it to be of higher quality and value. After that, I think my mind was kind of blown and I stopped reading, but that was just in the first eight pages, so I know for sure there is some real magic in this book. Um, and I do a lot of sales psychology, so this is all about the um, psychological uh, pursuit no, the psychology of persuasion. So, I'm going to I'm going to read this book very very soon because just off eight pages I got some some real good uh, gems. I just hadn't sat down to do it yet. Um, same thing with this one. I think the front of this one was really slow. I did try to start this one on a vacation, which is probably why I didn't. I didn't get too much in it, but this one is still on my list because it came so highly uh, recommended and they they got lots of like visuals in here I love charts and graphs and anything yeah the sh yeah let's see yeah anything that's gonna give me some kind of visual of like the results or when I implement this or how it looks being implemented, all of that stuff. Arima, uh, that happens to me all the time. One part will hit real good and then I'll stop reading because I needed it at that moment. Yeah, so I'm glad to know I'm not like the only one who has these little little quirks about them. Uh, traction, this is really great. If you need help with creating like the infrastructure of your business like and what are the roles if you're trying to hire people build an agency this is a great book for that um oh uh let's see this one I, I, I listened to this one uh and this is a mindset book the awakened millionaire a manifesto for the spiritual wealth movement this was good i'd listen to i listened to it audiobook so I don't have like a ton of like, I couldn't point you to a, where to go in this book because I didn't physically read it, um, but I listened to it. Oh, actually I did. You know what I did with this book? I listened to it while I had the book open so I could highlight. <laughs> so let's see, what have I highlighted in here? When we express gratitude, we open ourselves to receive more earn more, make more, and do more. We are telling every aspect of ourselves and everything we encounter that we are ready. We are ready to receive because we appreciate what we receive. And not only that we are ready to receive, but we are also ready to give. That's the key. So this book is about, it's mindset, but it's also like law of attraction, abundance, um, and really, what you what you give is what you get so this is kind of um there's some strategy in here as well kind of how to how to embark on this journey of the awakened millionaire um so this this was good uh mindset that was a mindset work uh book this one people work this was a good one um how to run a people first business in a digital world so if you're like client experience this would be a good book for client experience um anything that will help you be better with people that's gonna be this book right here um oh and i didn't do the design damn this is taking a long time okay i'm gonna run through these really quick because i got more books y'all i love books um really quickly the the win without pitching manifesto i think i got this off recommendation of uh chris du i read this in a book um this was really kind of meant for agencies um and i was already doing everything in here but it was good it was a good book um some of the stuff in here i don't agree with just because i am not i, I my approach was not that agency approach Let's see, I underlined something. What does this say? Those that do not claim meaningful territory are... Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Those that do not claim meaningful territory are rarely attacked. What is there to defend, after all? This is one of the indulgences of the generalist. It is an easier life. It is not as lucrative. It is not as fulfilling. It is, however, easy. 
Nobody attacks the unthreatening generalist. So it's talking about being a specialist. And, you know, uh, I talk about that a lot as well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this I think I read this in a day. I highlighted quite a lot under here. Um, selectivity begins with positioning the very focus of our uh, enterprise. Our public claim of expertise must be described must describe who we help and how and in this description those that would be better served by others should be able to select out so this is talking about messaging and how to position yourself the client should be able to determine from a sentence or two whether our expertise is likely to meet his needs so a little tip for you here your instagram bio does your instagram bio do that if not you're probably losing a lot of people because they don't know they're in the right place. Uh, creative strategy in the business of design. There were some good tips in here. Um, I don't think I would read it again. <laughs> it was good, but I wouldn't read this one again. It was, I think they used too many words to say what they needed to say. Like, just get to the point. But, I mean, but this book, this is the Bible, the brand Bible, okay? If you're a designer, you need this book. If you're not a designer, you need this book. It's gonna help you understand what your brand actually should be doing. Even if you're working with a designer, get this book because I basically really like solidified the foundation of what branding is because of this book. Every client I ever worked with, I always referred back to this book. And I learned um, color psychology in here. Let's see. Yeah. So just that alone, it tells you the meanings of the colors. Um, yes, every person who has a business should have this book. Absolutely. This is the second uh, book. So this is by Fiona Humberstone. This is her second book. Although it's beautiful, I don't, I didn't get anything out. <laughs> I didn't get anything out of this book other than some good questions to ask my uh, my clients but really it's 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 beautiful like the pictures are beautiful but I didn't learn anything that I didn't already learn here so yeah Riss, Rissa yeah uh Brooklyn get this one first you don't this one is just it's pretty that is pretty but I, I wouldn't have bought I wouldn't buy this one again like I wouldn't gift I would not send this as a gift to one of my students it would 100% be this one because even though this one's prettier the content in this one is by far superior um oh then I just have a couple of color this is pan is this the Pantone book yeah this is the Pantone book Honestly, I was disappointed in this book because I'm always looking for the meat like meanings of colors so that I just have that knowledge to make sure I'm designing um, visually a message, right? So that's why I, get, I love color psychology. This one I was disappointed in, um, but I don't even know what the hell is this? So they gave you some color uh, combo suggestions, but I'm like, I'm just kind of disappointed in this book, honestly. Uh, I mean, it's okay. I like it on my bookshelf. That's about it. But it's a it's a reference book for colors. Um, I have the PDF of the white one. Oh yeah, don't buy the hard copy. You don't need the the other one. This one, the designer's dictionary of color. I was a little disappointed in this one too. It's a great. It's like a good flip book, right? Like, I just was expecting more explanation or like insight into, it's It's really just pictures is what this is. Um, I mean, they do show some, you know, palette variations and ranges, but ultimately I was disappointed in this book. It's more, it's like a coffee table book. That's what this is like. Um, it's okay to have, but I never really referenced it like this one. 
I will say most of my design books are that way. It's like, it's just okay. This is another one that's just okay. It read like a school textbook and I was like, I can't. So I don't even know the name of this book. Uh, the Secret Language of Color. So again, uh, color psychology. Um, yeah, it just, this was not, it's like a textbook. I just couldn't get with it. I did flip through it, but I did, I did not learn. Oh, and this book was expensive too. And I didn't learn, I didn't learn anything. I didn't learn anything from this book. Um, that was my last design book. This last, this is just a spark book. I'm published in here, y'all. Hold on, let me find. So I had a website. One of my clients was featured in here. Let's see, where is it at? I should know what page it's on, right? Oh, there it is, right here. It's my client, Diana. So we're featured in a book. That's super cool. Um, but those are all of my books, you guys. Um, hopefully, you can you can find one that you like. But I do need to figure out. Um, so where should I go to learn more about so? No, color psychology. If you want to know color psychology, hold on. How to style your brand? Go to this book. If you want um, to know color psychology, yes. Um, let's see. Okay, so what I need to do now is pick three books to give away over the next three weeks. So maybe what I'll do is I'll post a picture of all the books and then I'll let you guys vote. Um, so if you're on Facebook, go to Instagram. Um, but I'll let you guys vote on which, which book I should give away. You know what, I think I'm just, this is gonna be up there. This will be one of the books I give away because I swear by it so much. Um, so, this will be one. Story brand, okay. Uh, let me see, where is that? So we're looking at this one. So I'll post a picture and you guys can like let me know out of all of them, which one we should, well there's three more, which three we should give away over the next three weeks, okay? Um, so definitely went like way, 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 way over. Uh, Brooklyn says, pick me. I worked hard on this lot. You did work hard. I'm gonna send you a book, Brooklyn. I got you. Don't buy, don't buy it. I'm about, I'm gonna send you this one. And I'm gonna give away another copy. And y'all know I love y'all because this is an expensive book. This is like a $30 book, you guys. Okay. This is a $30 book, but don't let that, uh, don't let that price tag deter you because I would I would spend a hundred dollars on this book okay um so Brooklyn DM me your uh, your address and I'll send you one of these and then um, I'm gonna give another one away um, as well so I guess I'm gonna give away five books this month uh, yes you're welcome Brooklyn thank you for your help I really appreciate it I appreciate all y'all hanging out with me for an hour this went way way long but I hope it was helpful um, if you have follow-up questions about any of the books feel free to feel free to reach out I'm happy to share I'm an open book if I don't like a book I will tell you um, but and if you have suggestions I'm open I, I need some new books although I have a couple to still finish but anywho um, don't be jealous actually it's okay you can enter to win we gonna listen we all winning in here, okay? So, um, that's all I got. I appreciate y'all hanging out. I will see y'all same time tomorrow, uh, noon o'clock, <laughs> Central Standard Time, and I don't know what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Should we talk about color psychology? Ooh, that could be fun. Uh, Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. Okay, okay. And I have a thread, too, um from yesterday. If you have a book suggestion, there's a thread already where you can go add one. Um, Atomic Habits was like, there were like three people who uh, that was their favorite book. So maybe I need to try to read it again. I don't know. But I'm going to end. Uh, I hope you have a great Saturday and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye guys. <laughs>